We talk about decentralization and then and I till later. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Minecoin, your coin, blockchain, baby, Mondays at 1600 hours Eastern Studio A. understanding must arise during these times of unparalleled deceit. A view into the depths of society on pawn which this country has fallen. A storm brews upon the horizon. It's been said that those that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear will play a paramount role in the furthering of humanity and civilized society. But can civilized society and humanity survive the coming conflicts not seen since a dawn of time in ages by past? But you can find true forms of information and knowledge in abundance at revolution.radio freedomsluts.com the number one listener supported radio station on the globe. Stand upon the right side of history. Right side of history. General Holder, you've got to get us out of here now! I won't let you do that. Don't you dare let me get out of here! Don't you dare let me get out of here! Don't you dare let me get out of here! Revolution. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Hi there, welcome to Sunday Night Live, and we are bringing you the show straight from half of us from London, half of us from Los Angeles, half of us from Czechoslovakia, our guest. So, Tajinda Jill, welcome to the show, my co host. Hi, Christine. Hi there, I'm Christine Hart, um, also hosting tonight, and our guest is magician. And author Brian Ballett. Welcome to the show, Brian. Yep, nice to see you again. Sorry, hear you again. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. So, what are we going to talk about tonight? I thought we were going to talk about magic communicating with entities. Um, is that really the subject? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I've um, <laughs> got all my notes off. in front of me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you talk well, away, and we'll listen. Right. Okay. I'll give my background. Um, I was lucky enough to be taught by an extremely high adept. Um, I've been an occultist all my life. I'm now 63. Yeah. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to actually tell you how you contact uh, higher beings. Some of you may know it, but a lot of you may learn something that you've not heard before. Now, essentially, if we're going to work magically, we have to start with something called self-observation. This was learned from Plato. Plato had this above his academy. Essentially, he said, know thyself. But it's really difficult to find any sort of um, philosophical data on what Plato actually meant by know thyself yeah um also early greek philosophy was classed as pagan by the church so a lot of it was destroyed however there are a few glimpses for example in the 1885 article of the disciples of christ by j lobo it says plato sojourned for a time in egypt and some think that he also visited babylon persia and india 
And of course, these are the places where we know how these adepts meditated. But there's also a very sort of, should we say, dark cloud over this statement because um, nobody really knows if Plato went to these places uh, because most of this stuff is based on the Arab accounts. And it's the reason why it's the Arab accounts is, is because they used to keep the ancient um, texts of the Greeks and use them as a type of collateral instead of carrying gold. So essentially the, the Arabs, if you like, are like our link to this, this past epoch, which essentially has almost disappeared. But in the sort of like 1700s, the Rosicrucians came along and then sort of like later on from that, we got like practitioners such as Steiner and Gerda and also um, Helena Blavatsky, yeah, who were very heavily influenced by the Platonic movement of the Rosicrucians in the 17th century. And then they adopted this meditation technique, which is based on know yourself. Yeah. Um, this, this technique is about freeing one's mind from emotions. You can only contact higher beings if you do not have any distractions. Yeah, that's the only way that we can get deeper insights into our into ourselves and the world around us. And this includes other beings from nature. Yeah. So this is one thing that we must work on is, is that we must work on ourselves because if we don't find this inner peace, we don't find this inner relaxation and we don't find the quieting of the emotions, we will not achieve insights to higher perspective. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. Now to understand the theory behind this sort of um, meditation, is to understand the concept of the mind that the mind, if you like, is, is spiritual energy. It's composed of vibratory energy and it belongs to if you, the, the material world, which is classed as negative in polarity and is acknowledged to be the vital life force corresponding. The soul is a vibratory energy, but it's of a material form. And it's derived from the cosmic consciousness and is positive in priority. In, interestingly, the um, Freud, um, who lived very close in time to Gerda von Blavatsky, divided the mind into the three levels, the conscious mind, the pre-conscious mind and the unconscious mind, which is pretty much mirroring what this ancient uh, method of meditation is. The, the thing is with this is, is that we have to have this immediate awareness and it has to be to do with spiritual and material matters. Hence, you know, what happens is, 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 is that we become over-processed and if we're over-processed and we are full of desires, then we, we will not make any of the relevant choices. I mean, when we begin the meditation, when one begins this meditation, this is also mentioned by Steiner and Gurdjieff, when we awaken the self, the self-absorbing starts with, we go through the day and you ask yourself this question, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? As well as what am I doing? Now, the reason why we do this is, is because we want to make sure that we're not in a state of unconscious. Every moment of the day, we are, and night, we are contacted by beings from different levels of consciousness. Now, when we are not conscious, they will come through and influence us. So the idea is to be completely conscious. So an adept will ask themselves all, all the time, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? And what am I doing? Okay. Because if you don't ask yourself that, then you will go into what you call a reactive state. 
which means that you are no longer conscious. You are just reacting. And if you re are reacting, then you will not be able to make contact with the beings that are trying to make contact with you. So, you know, once again, I can't reiterate, you have to keep asking yourself, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? What am I doing? And more importantly, how am I responding? So once we keep asking these questions, it, if somebody does this and they do it properly, they will reach what we understand as called enlightenment, or if you like, um, the clairvoyant mind, yeah, for magical working. Um, this method is, is very, very important because if one does not get it and you try to connect with entities of a higher level, you will, you will collapse both spiritually and mentally. So, you know, so one has to be, you know, if you're going to try this, one has to be very, very dedicated as to understanding what they are doing. And the other side of it is, is to keep continually positive emotions and intentions. Because if you're going to meet entities of a higher level, one needs to be be in a state of positive emotion and positive intention. So the other side as well is, is, is that you have to understand, understand what part of your mind do you need to sort of keep open. Yeah? And how this is done is, is, is it, it's a combination of sacred geometry with Hebrew letters or Latin letters. And these magical patterns are then vibrated. And these magical patterns, if you like, are straight, go straight through to the higher form of consciousness. And after you've activated one of these geometric thought patterns, this is when the clairvoyance starts, but it starts in the energy area of the heart. For any magical working, one starts with the heart, then the head, and then the spirit, yeah, or what is commonly known as the will. But for contact with the higher entities, the heart must be fully open and full of unconditional love. Once, once the heart has been activated, an internal rose light moves towards the brain and the third eye and into the third ventricle. This third ventricle is called Brahman's cave. It's an empty space between the pineal and the pituitary gland. And when this space becomes illuminated, you get the direct physical vision. OK, so when this so, so when a when a practitioner is sorry. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Oh, sorry. Um, no, I didn't say anything. OK, we're already getting uh, we're already getting creatures coming through because I'm, 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 I'm going <laughs> oh, through it. Um, so when this process is completed, the, the the practitioner is in a fully clairvoyant state where they start to perceive non-physical realities. And once you connect with the physical reality, this is when you use the energy from the solar plexus, known as the will. This is where you get Crowley's do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And of course, from this state, you then connect with either the highest orders of Seferin, the cherubim, the thrones or the middle order, the dominies, the virtues, the powers, the lower orders, the participants, the archangels and the angels. And this is essentially how, how you connect with higher entities. If you do not do this, then essentially you, you, you won't do it. It, it. It's impossible, yeah, because essentially you... you you, one's etheric body has to connect with the astral body and then the astral body has to move to the higher level of consciousness. Yeah. 
So, you know, so, so, you know, literally the activation process is heart, head and will. I mean, in fact, all spiritual formulas use this, use this to get to higher worlds of consciousness. Yeah. OK. With it, without doing it, then essentially, you know, you, you, you're either imagining what you see or you're just not doing it. Does it is, is is that clear? Uh huh. Is is you know sort of like so once you start this spiritual path, you then start connecting with the what's it higher level consciousness or what Plato referred to as the as the ideal thought forms, as in as 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 above, so below. Yeah. Hmm. So, so um, I mean, literally, this is this is the only way to contact um, higher level beings. I don't know if you've tried it. Have you tried it? Yeah, you gave me the sigil to um, talk to Shemyaza. Actually, I was looking at the diary of, uh, of um, you know, my conversations with him over a period of time. It was quite interesting, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, the, I mean, the thing is, 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 is to, to do this um, in in the sense what you do is, is, is obviously you you do have the sigil, but but you you sit in contemplation after you've worked for sort of I don't know sort of at least at least a month, just arranging yourself, um, going through you know what am I thinking, what am I feeling, what am I doing, how am I reacting. And then once you get to that level of consciousness, ironically, the Sufis use the same technique of summoning, is that they, you then start hope, opening the heart or what you call the heart chakra. And literally, w when this is open, you then allow this energy to go up in, into, into the top part of the brain like so you know into brahman's cave then when you connect you then use these the the spiritual sense the solar plexus to contact with the spirit this is what they mean by using the soul to control the spirit it's 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 one of the most essential parts of working magically mm. okay because a lot of people make the mistake where they will just contact the spirit then they will do some kind of um sort of deal with it but in reality you don't have to do the deal because essentially you know we are higher beings than most of the spirits out there so there is there really is no need to do, sort of do the do the binding and doing the um, sort of like, you know, packs that, that people do with them, because essentially, um, if, if, if we understand what we are, we are much higher than a lot of the, you know, the, a lot of the sort of spirits that, you, that invade our world and they're around us all the time. But many people forget that they that they have this, if you like, that they have the soul and that they have the power of creation, which gives them the ability to control the um, entities that are in front of them. Yeah. Mm. You know, this is like really, really important. Um, like, for example, um, I used on you, I, I used a magical spell uh, about Oh God! About about three, be about three years ago now. Do, mm -hmm. do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, um, and that was to um, remove a blockage, but the, but the but to remove the blockage, it's not just a question of saying the spell. One has to put themselves into that frame of mind, move up, if you like, the Kundalini or the, or the red light. And then once it has moved up, then then one can sort of say the you know the, the words, and that will connect with the entity, 
which will then do the healing. Yeah. Mm. You know, sort of like, but, you know, it, there is no point in sort of doing anything until this technique is mastered, because if you don't do this technique, then essentially you're not connecting. And if you're not connecting, you know, you can sit there all day sort of um, pretending that it's working and it's not really working. But, you know, it's it's like the listener has to understand that behind, you know, around us, that there are literally um, thousands and thousands of of like higher beings. Yeah. Mm. Now, the interesting thing with higher beings is, is because it's a being of light doesn't necessarily mean to say that it's good. Ironically. OK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because there are there are many beings of light that will come through, which essentially will feed the ego, will feed the drives. Yeah. For example, um, Kelly and D, they pulled the angel Medini through. Yeah. Who was allegedly an angel of light. And the first thing that the angel of Medini suggested to Dee and Kelly was, was that they swap wives. Okay. So, you know, and they were probably the first people who in the West to contact angels using um, what is now called the Enochian system. And unfortunately, uh, Kelly and... um, D swap wives, and then it turned out later that Medini, although she was a um, angel of light, was not that, um, should we say, wonderful uh, angel. Mm. So you know, so that's another thing as well that people have to understand that when they're into the higher levels, yeah, that not everything that is bright light is in fact, you know, sort of like angelic in behavior i don't know if you've have you come across that yourself what the behavior of angels yeah yeah not all of them are brilliant oh yeah 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 well i I mean i only had that one experience um so i i don't think he was nice to me so you know yeah, but but they, they 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 do tend to be you know I mean like um, like I said you know you, you really have to be careful um, you know, even in the Bible it tells you to test the angel. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. You know because if you don't, then essentially you know you you don't know what is in front of you to put it bluntly. Because uh, another myth is, and this is uh, maybe somebody will get upset when I say this, but your angel is not necessarily got wings and a halo and, you know, looks <laughs> angelic. Most of the angels that I've ever met have been, if you like, uh, very powerful forms. Yeah. OK. Energy mm. forms. You um, Usually a bright light. Yeah. Usually a bright mm. light. But um, they, they've certainly not looked um, humanoid to, to me, you know, they, 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 mm. they, they, they've certainly been their own, their own, what do you call it, their, their own mantle. They, 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 they've not looked anything like, you know, the, 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 the pictures of the angels. I don't know if you've come across the same thing. I, I didn't see what, oh, I, I kind of did see what Shemyaza looked like. He looked to me like someone with like literally thousands upon thousands of wings and the wings all had eyes in them. Yeah. So it's like nothing like the, you know, the. uh, Yeah, no. Nothing like. Yeah. Which is the thing. uh, Another really good way to contact with angels. I I don't know if, if you've tried this, but this once you've got into this meditation process that I'm talking about, is to use a old phone. Yeah, ironically, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, one uses an old phone because it's got silicone. 
Yeah, it, you know, the silicone chip is in the phone. And of course, non-organic life is found in silicone. Yeah. Okay, right. organic, organic life is found in carbon. So to use a phone is like really, really good because essentially it really attracts um, entities. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mirrors nowadays don't do it because in the old days, the backing of mirrors used to be mercury. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now that, that they don't do that. Yeah. So it, it's better to sort of have a, an old phone with a shiny glass, put it in the middle of a pentagram if you want to work in the um, sort of like Christian system, one of the best ways to do it is to use the aces of the rider weight pack, yeah? Because mm. the rider weight pack all all assimilate with angels and you put those on the, on the points of the um, pentagram you then go into the state of meditation. You put you put candles around the the, the phone, and it's pretty guaranteed that a angel will come through. I don't know if you've tried that. Have you tried? No, that? I haven't. No. So what? You use the major arcana and put them on the points? Yeah. Yeah, and you use candles as well, you know, tea candles as well. And you put the um, the phone in the middle, yeah? Like yeah. I, I, I use an old planchette, which is quite big, which is really good, you know? Yeah. And that works really, really well. Um, the other way as well to find out, people are always saying to me, how can you tell whether or not the entity that you're talking to is a good entity or a bad entity? Well, these um, have have you come across the dual mirror system? No. It's really interesting. It's you have a normal mirror, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. and if you can afford it, an obsidian one. But if you can't afford it, once again, the 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 mobile phone will will work really really well. And essentially, what you do is is you, is is that. Um, you don't need candles. You sit, you go into the meditative state again, you raise the chakras, and then you stare into the black mirror and you go through your negative thoughts, okay, until you are aware of which, what negative thought comes in your mind. And the negative thought that comes in your mind that is not related to your mind is a entity and on the same way if you look into the light mirror and go into the deep state of meditation you can then feel the higher entities that have interfered with your thought pattern it's a it's a really interesting exercise it's, yeah. it's something that you know literally if you're working with angels it's something that you need to be doing every day really because it's so many of them um, that, you know, the, there are literally thousands of them, it's, you know, and, it's, mm. and, the, and the only thing that you can tell is, is, is by what happens to your life. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You know, that's the only way of, 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 of telling, you know, what the entity is. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I, I did find with Shemyaza that he, I mean, I was reading about the diary and it's like a year old and he was saying, you know, he would help me um, with money. I mean, I, I don't really, although, you know, I did get some temping work in an office, you know, for a few months. Um, I didn't quite mean that. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, well, that's that's the thing. I mean, it's sort of like you know, it's 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 you know, this is where the will comes in. This is this is where, you know, literally, you know, is is to open one's heart chakra, uh, raise the internal light up to Brahman's cave, 
and then use the solar plexus of the will to instruct the entity that's in front of you with the type of behavior that you, that you will accept from it. Okay. Mm. What's yeah. Brahman's cave? That sounds like something lower. No, no, not at all. That's that's where all that's where all the high stuff happens. You know, it's it's between the pineal gland and the um, the third eye. Literally, right. it's a gap that's inside the head. And when the um, if you like the chakra energy moves up the the body, it illuminates that cave within within the head, and that's when you make the contact with the higher higher beings. Right. Without doing that, you 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 cannot um, you literally cannot c contact higher beings. Hmm. Okay. Because essentially. Um, you're dealing with the conscious mind, right? And the conscious mind is 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 not where the higher beings are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, like, say, for example, if you're um, working with jinn, many people want to meet the um, the shadom or the hadom. I don't know how it's said because many, many people have told me different ways of saying it. But essentially, they they sit in the pitch dark. And they do exactly the same procedure, except um, within the Muslim system, it, it's it's called completely different names. Um, sorry, they just just come to me in a minute. Uh, one is the Ru, yeah. The Ru yeah. is the is the spirit, yeah. Okay, and the other one is no, and the Nafs. The Nafs is the soul. Uh, but essentially, it's the, it, it, it's pretty much the same dynamic of 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 thinking and acting. Right. So essentially, you know, so essentially, they sit there, they clean, they clean the heart, and they clean it with positive um, prayers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until the heart is absolutely unconditional and full of love, and then it goes up the the chakra into Brahman's cave. And that's when the illumination comes, and that's when you see literally a flash of red, or, or you know, sort of like in in the third eye. It's um, it's a truly amazing experience when it happens because literally it, it, you've got the usual dots when your eyes are closed, but then when the when when the um, in the Bible, they call it the oil has moved into the brain. You get this incredible flash of red. Yeah. OK. And then the entities come through thick and fast. And that's when you switch to the solar plexus. Hmm. You, using the will. Yeah. All right. I see. Yeah. There, there is another sort of very primitive way of contacting angels but if you do this you're more likely to get a jinn because jinn are obviously made of they're essentially they're made of electricity but one of the one of the easiest ways to sort of contact jinn uh, i'll probably be in big trouble for telling you this but literally you get a transistor radio and you put it on static yeah mm -hmm. okay and then you um, literally do your meditation. And when you do the meditation, the voices will start coming through the static. Hmm. I don't, have you done that? No. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's, that's quite interesting. That, that does work. Um, but the, the other thing as well is, of course, is, is uh, how one protects oneself when because when you go into such a state like this is usually before you go into this like higher level of consciousness you build um, a bright light around you yeah okay you do that when it's in the heart chakra so you start the 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 bright light around you and once the bright light around you and you start meditating that's when you start saying the word om 
Right. A U M. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's a, a special breathing that you can do to to complement this movement. And when you have the vibration and the breathing together, the 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 chakra energy. Like I said, I'm I'm using chakra energy, but it's not. It's 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 the rose energy moves up the what we understand as the chakras into the head and push you've got you're, you're contacting angels by the way it won't it takes an awful lot of practice okay because you have to still the mind you know that that's the you know like it can take months just to be able to get to the state where one's mind is still yeah mm, of course yeah yeah, so it takes months and months, but once once one's done that, then you then concentrate on the heart, then the head, and then the solar plexus. It has to be the heart because you have to have love. If you do not have love, you will not contact the angels. To put it bluntly, right. you know, it, anything but love, and you will not count, contact an angel. Okay. But that doesn't mean to say that every angel that you're going to contact is going to be a nice angel. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, which is which is the thing. But like, yeah, I mean, that's you know, sort of like um, I'm just trying to think of another way to contact angels. Interesting way. Another way that people contact angels, um, usually they do it out of consciousness. It's when the when the person is at their lowest ebb yeah and they still believe in if you like the god and the angel an angel will come to you then yeah okay Mm -hmm. but you know one has to be at the complete lowest ebb yeah you know to, to 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 you know so when you are contacting that entity that you are contacting them if you like, with with only your pure intention and only your pure spirit, once again, you know, the, the mind is quietened. Yeah. Mm. You know, but I mean, I believe you had that you had that um, experience. You told me once. What happened? You told me that you screamed and you screamed and you screamed and then you got a house for um, having given to you. Yeah. No, I think that was the when um, I wanted a baby. When you wanted a baby? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I demanded it. I, I was getting lessons um, in magic from a Jesuit, and um, he he said to do that, so, so I did. Uh, and I got pregnant really soon after that. Well, there you go. So, like I said, but, but one has to be literally um, sort of like, so clear yeah you have to be desperate in both mind body and spirit that you have to be so clear that that gives you the contact with the the angel yeah mm. you know that that's that, that that's the way that that people do it without without the training but with the training one has to sit down concentrate on making the mind go quiet concentrate on the heart chakra move the heart chakra into the brain. Once you are in that field of entity, that's when you then use the solar plexus region to control that area. Remember, you were also sat in a bright white light as well to protect yourself. And usually at the same time, you are you know, doing um, like that you know mm. so that you know so it's, so literally you have the sigil of the angel you do you, you do everything and then you literally go right inside the sigil the sigil will come inside you yeah you know it, mm. you know all sigils are portals to the entity that 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 you wish to communicate with right if you do it correctly if it's not, if it's not, then essentially it's just um, a pretty pattern. You'll find that most of the sigils as well will have um, Hebrew letters. And right. uh, it's it's worth doing some kind of research to find out how the, the Hebrew letters are vibrated. 
Yeah. What do you mean? Well, you have to vibrate the letters. Yeah. What does vibrating mean? Well, you know, so like, 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 say, for example, like if we look, look at the word arm, yeah, you say arm like that. So you vibrate, mm -hmm. you vibrate each letter. Yeah. Or but with a sigil, you, you can't see any letters. Well, it depends what sigils you've got. Well, say yeah. like Shemyaza's one, that hasn't got any letters, right? Um, yeah, well, then that's the case you would, you would, um, I don't want to do it now, but you, but you would vibrate Shemyaz's name. Name? Yeah. Right. Okay. If you vibrate Shemyaz's name correctly and use that sigil that I showed you, you have got more than a good chance of a physical manifestation. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, you know, literally, um, a, a, an adept friend of mine did it, and he got um, Shemyaza came through physically, and that and that was that was quite interesting. Oh, uh, I wasn't, cool. I wasn't there, but um, my my friend told me about it, and he said that literally he did the he got the sigil, he did the he did what I told him to do, and literally he he vibrated and. He opened his eyes in his kitchen, looked across the table, and there was Sat Shem Yaza. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, it was really interesting because um, uh, you know he, he you know he said to Shem Yaza, he said, um, "Am I safe talking to you?" And Shem Yaza said, "Whether you're safe or not is not dependent on me; it's dependent on my master." Okay. Mm. So it was sort of like, yeah, so it was like really, really interesting. And he was like, and before Shemnaza uh, went away, he turned around to him and he said, um, you have some thinking to do. He said, uh, when you have thought, I will come back to you. <laughs> so like, yeah, but like, it was really, it was, uh, it was quite interesting. Hmm, interesting. But, yeah, but like, but you have to do it properly. You know, like mm. I said, you have to do it properly. And, what I've been uh, doing, the new author, um, the new Avatar by Jared Carr, but you told me you didn't hear of that book. It's got no, a of lot it. of prayers to Yahweh in there. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people have been enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean you know, at the end of the day, your, your spiritual path is your spiritual path. You know, it's, yeah. You know, so, you know, it's, it's what you know, it's it's, it's what. Uh, Whatever gets you through the night, to, mm. you know. So, to, you know, because you know, in reality, you know, so when when we when we leave this mortal coil, yeah, you know, it, generally speaking, that will decide where you will go, yeah. Um, and it's it, it, and people don't understand this. They they don't they don't seem to understand the relevance of what they do in this life is going to reflect very badly or very well in the in the next level of consciousness yeah um mm. you know, for example uh if you speak if you talk to adepts that they real adepts never talk about what is a hell if you wish but what they do talk about is an absence of God, an absence of love. Mm. Now, now, if you're going to be sort of like a many long, long, long time in a vacuum like of space with no love, you can imagine how how that must feel. Yeah. Mm. You know, so it's so it's very important that if whatever magical field you do that you understand if there isn't any love there then mm. essentially when you go through to the other level of consciousness they certainly won't be any love either mm. does uh yeah exactly does um taj want to ask brian anything uh no i'm just listening to you guys talking but, right. uh, <laughs> yeah i'm just interested in the entities um sort of thing like how you know what you're communicating with because I think a lot of people do like in the occult um, connect with entities to ask for things I guess you know whether it be money love whatever 
that kind of thing. What do you what do you think about that? Well, I, I think so. the thing is, is 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 that you're never sure who you're getting to put it bluntly. Mm. Yeah, because um, you know, quite so are, there, are, are there like consequences to connecting to these entities, like either well, the, positive or negative consequences? Well, the, 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 that's why I spoke about the, the the double mirror technique, where you have the light mirror and you have the dark mirror, especially you know after you've you know you've 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 met an entity, you need to understand. What, how that energy within the mirror is pulling on your heart, yeah? Okay, so when you're looking into the dark obsidian and your heart is aching, then you probably know this, this guy isn't very, very good, where if you look into the light, you know, the, the light mirror and you feel great and you feel euphoric and you feel in a state of ecstasy, then, then the chances are you're, you're with, you know, you're with a, a entity which is probably okay, mm. you know, sort of like the, the other thing as well is, is, is that um, you will get entities which will pretend to be other entities. Um, if you go through the right type of prayers, you know, this is why we, you know, we have the rosary bead, this is why you have the Mishnah in, in, in the in the Muslim religion is is that one has to keep a complete concentration on both the the prayer and the mind and the and the and the building of the sort of chakra energy and if if you do that and you don't deviate you should get the and you use the right sigil you should you should get that you should get the entity that 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 you are requesting yeah but as i said it's not guaranteed do you have to be like in a certain sort of frame of mind kind of mental state to be able to well, summon I mean, these, these entities yeah, well, or I mean, can anybody just do it whether they're no it's impossible to do it the, the, the way that i've been saying is, is is that literally you have to be completely quiet in the mind you mm. then you then work on the heart chakra where you where you put it in a state of unconditional love yeah and when it's in that unconditional love you then raise that energy up to the part of the brain which is the third eye and also the sort of the, the what is called brahman's cave when you do that there is like a it can be described as a flash or just a, a sudden like expanse of red then all these entities come through then you one uses the solar plexus yeah to sort of strengthen yourself within that realm of consciousness and you think about what you want to contact and and, and you make sure that 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 is you know that you believe it 100 percent and if you do that you will connect with entities and you will um, connect with the entity that that you you want but if you make a small mistake along the line something else will come in this is this is why this is why you, before you even start doing these processes you know you sort of you, you go through the you know you go through the magical working you know you sort of you know you ask yourself what am i thinking what am i feeling yeah you know sort of you know these are the essential truths you know if you're looking for a truth outside yourself then essentially it's it's not your truth yeah you know i mean that you know the the whole thing is is to work with what the rosicrucians term is is the master within yeah um because if if you don't work with that then you are going to be working with something else and 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 that really is is the problem because the the first thing that happens when you're working with something else is that you get this like massive ego boost where you think you're amazing and you think that you're really you know you you really you know you really are the uh, you know the 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 top person in what you're doing but essentially this is this is just another being of light which more than likely doesn't even know it's like that 
but it but it but it will pull you into a, a realm of consciousness that, that that you really don't know and and want anything to do with and that's you know that's why you, you your average um adept will 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 spend months you know saying what am i thinking what am i feeling what am i doing how am i responding because all the time these entities are coming th through to you and of course once you stop being unconscious and you are aware of your conscious state when something comes through to you you can then contact with it straight away yeah okay mm -hmm. You know, which is like um, really important because it's oh, we're getting stuff coming through. Um, it's if you wait, then it will be replaced by something else. You know, so it's 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 it's, it's a difficult one. But if you make contact at the right time and you are in 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 the in the in the proper frame of mind and you have this sort of mental wherewithal, you can then start this communication with this entity. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what, do you, what do you think about people who actually want to connect with negative entities for whatever reason? Do you think that's a good idea? Or, I mean, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, it's personal choice. You know, some people don't really have a choice and they are drawn to these negative entities. Um, if, if you look at most people who are drawn to negative entities, they usually have quite a bad history. Um, and, and that really affects how, how they are, if you like, mentally. And this pulls them towards these negative entities. Yeah. OK. Uh -huh. Um, you know, I mean, like, uh, I, I've heard Eo Coetting say, talking about his life and how he was, you know, abused when he was a, a child. And that's what brought him towards the more negative entity. But Somebody, he'd, probably, he'd probably say that Lucifer was a being of light rather than negative. Well, yeah, but I mean, Lucifer is a bit, Lucifer is a bit, a being of light, but, but like the, like, like the, um, very powerful limelight of the old days before um, electricity. They used to use what they call a limelight, hence that's why we go in the limelight. But the limelight was also incredibly hot. So the closer that you got to the, the light, the hotter and hotter it gets. Yeah, okay. okay. So, so you start off with, with the light but when one moves towards the light, instead of getting light, you get heat. Yeah. You know, so I mean, you know, the, the, that's really the analogy of Lucifer. But really, the jury's out as to whether or not Lucifer is is, in fact, um, all, all, all what the, the church said he is, because essentially Lucifer per se was the Roman name. For the for, you know for the planet you know, mm. so, so do you think i mean considering the bbc attack coetting and kind of finished him and i've had um you know an attack by the bbc obviously i'm not you know as knowledgeable as um eric coetting but do you think the bbc are actually some kind of a cult sort of do you think they've got something going on i just think if it bleeds it leads yeah you know mm. It's as simple as that, you know. It's, it's, you know, you know yourself. You've worked in the the industry for a long time. If you're low on stories, yeah, then they tend to sort of get stories which people will react to, yeah. Teenage mm -hmm. pregnancies, I married a witch, all this kind of stuff. No, I mean, it, I, it, I mean, it sells papers. I, I, I mean, the people that work there, because I had doings with one of their people and it felt when he was speaking to me on the phone that he was sending like energy of some kind that left me feeling really drained actually and i well, thought he, he, that that particular person may well have some kind of a you know um occult working i don't know i don't know him i wasn't on the receiving end of the of the phone call but mm. i mean i mean every reporter that i've read just tends to want a good story 
really. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if you agree with that, but that. that uh, most of them are psychos, you know. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, I think more sociopaths, aren't they? They don't care. Yeah. They just they did. They, they just uh, want. A, they just they want a story. Yeah. yeah. It's to aggrandize themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, I mean, thousands, well, millions of people read what they read. So it's it's an amazing buzz, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And then they do anything and they think cleaning up the industry is getting rid of PIs and, oh, you mustn't lie to people. And then they go and sort of bullshit people, you know, about what they're doing and they're dishonest. And, you know, and I think to clean up the newspaper industry you'd have to, first of all, get rid of the controllers and secondly, stop them from being narcissists and having massive egos, you know? It's yeah, never going it's, it's, it's that old thing, isn't it? You know, sort of like, if you want to be informed, you read the newspaper. If you don't want to be informed, you read the newspaper. Yeah. You know, <laughs> nobody, no, nobody takes the newspaper seriously. No. Yeah? You know, it's sort of like, I mean, there are... It's like anything, you know, there are snippets of information which are relevant to your life. But mm. realistically, you know, the rest is, is, as you know yourself, if it leads, it bleeds. Yeah. So sorry, if it bleeds, it leads. So there you go. Mm. You know, I mean, th these people are the worst people on God's earth. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, 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 but that's but they're trained to be the worst people on God's earth as well. You know, mm. I, don't, I don't think there's any sort of sinister or occult connection. I just think they're. They're usually quite bright kids who join some organization and they want a certain bias to, to, mm. to their reporting. Mm. Mm. And it's unfortunate that you, if you're on the wrong side of it, mm. you know, which is, which is, you know, it happens all the time. I mean, but it's not just you they hammer. I mean, they hammer anybody. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sorry. You know, I mean, can, can you remember? I mean, look at the Maxwell case. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not on about Ghislaine. I'm on about the real Maxwell case. Yeah, mm. Mm. I mean, you know, sort of. And if you remember Lady Diana as well, before she died, I mean, they, they just hounded her all the time. You know, so it's it's like you know, if if you play with those guys, they play rough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Oh, on that note, I think we've got music. Well, thank you for coming on, um, Brian, and I hope you come back again. And always nice to have you. Thank you for Taj. Um, Thanks. Co -host. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Everyone you have a good me. night. Cool. Good night. Good night. Bye. Radio at freedomslips.com and we'll be right back after this message. junkie I won't say a goddamn word why they won't understand they won't understand why we do it they won't understand it's about the men next to you and that's it that's all it is revolution radio freedomslips.com Number one listener supporter radio, the printing press for freedom at a time when freedom is needed the most. I am Bill Johnson. Some consider my efforts to be an underground law school. I am not an attorney and I do not give legal advice. I teach. That's lawful and legal. Consider yourself served. You are to appear Wednesday nights, 10.30.
10 p.m. Eastern, Studio A. My forte? Foreclosure and contract law. Grab your legal pad and pen. Learn a broad spectrum of law spanning administrative, criminal,